Good evening. You're watching this week a weekly news of a program. I'm your host, Anno Gambato. This year marks the 60th anniversary of Mongolia's accession to the United Nations. On the occasion of the anniversary, several activities were held over the week. On Monday, a press conference on seven days for the UN was held at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia. Mongolia joined the United Nations on October 27, 1961, becoming the 101st member. Mongolia had applied to join the United Nations five times starting in 1946, and in 1961 the Mongolian flag was finally hosted at the UN headquarters in New York City. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is planning a number of activities to celebrate the 60th anniversary and to promote the importance of joining the United Nations to the public, including children and youth. As the, in the press conference, the State Secretary mentioned that we have a whole week long of events planned for the special 60th anniversary of uh, Mongolia joining the United Nations. We are launching this with planting 2,500 trees on Bayanzurg mountain, which is a, a, a ecologically challenged area. We are trying to plan that all together with all UN colleagues. So that's the first one. We're also launching uh, the uh, uh, events of the UN conference, model UN conference, focusing on climate change with children in, in the National University of Mongolia. We have a book exhibition, we have a photo album exhibition, we have uh, events that we are also launching here on 27th, which is the grand finale with all, uh, uh, with the cooperation of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs. So all these events that we are doing is just to symbolize the fact that Mongolia has achieved a lot in the last 60 years together with the United Nations. Over the past five decades, the relationship between the UN and Mongolia has matured into a strong and mutually beneficial partnership. The UN in Mongolia consists of 11 agencies that contribute to development across various sectors, from democratic governance and human rights to socio-economic development, climate change adaptation, and protecting the environment. The UN team supports the country in achieving the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Mongolia is an active member of the UN and Mongolian soldiers actively participate in United Nations peacekeeping operations. But there is a long way forward. As I mentioned, the Sustainable Development Goals, the 60 years has been great, but next eight years that we have by 2030 would be a very crucial moment to move towards inclusive and sustainable development. Mongolia is an active member of the United Nations. Our country is a leader on certain issues. For example, Mongolia is very active in the activities for landlocked developing countries. As a result of many years of hard work done by diplomats, an intergovernmental research center for landlocked countries was established in Ulaanbaatar. Moreover, Mongolia works actively in many other areas, including issues facing rural girls, women's education, and democracy. In small countries like Mongolia, international organizations such as the United Nations play a pivotal role in protecting the nation's interests through political and diplomatic means, communicating their prospects and position on global issues, as well as making progress on their development path. Experts say that Shipul actually contains a little bit of soft cashmere wool. For example, one kilogram of Shipul can contain up to 200 grams of cashmere. In our next report, we will introduce some local companies that operate in the clothes manufacturing sector. A local company, Mongolnos, discovered this business opportunity and started manufacturing knitted products out of Kashmir extracted from sheep wool. The quality of the fiber can easily compete with that of ordinary Kashmir from goats, and we know that. In the meantime, the production costs can be decreased up to threefold. This fine fiber can be produced from 100% sheep wool. In addition, we can mix it with 20 to 30% goat cashmere. If these fibers are exported abroad, the clothing produced from these natural materials will be expensive. We are operating at only 15 to 50% of our factory capacity. 
The producers note that government support is needed in developing a sustainable light knitting industry in Mongolia. Annually, Mongolia produces 25 to 35 thousand tons of sheep wool, and only 30 percent of that is purchased by local companies and becomes a value-added product. For example, public servants' uniforms are produced from imported materials. I would like to show this dark blue material that can be used for making uniforms for policemen, soldiers and other public servants. We have the capacity to produce all these necessary uniforms locally. This is the Ivel clothing factory. They produce 25 to 40,000 pieces of clothing per month. The company purchases its materials once every three months, so they say no material deficit was encountered during the pandemic. However, the company owner says the tax policy support is really needed for companies operating in the clothing industry. We do imports like zippers, buttons and other small items from foreign markets. Producers like us need a special support policy on the import of raw materials. Also, with regards to the social welfare policy, there should be some tax support provided to people who are working in local factories. The Ivel clothing factory employs around 120 workers. The business owners note that if people start buying locally produced goods and products, it will have a positive outcome on the economy as it will create more jobs. A tree planting ceremony was held at the Pantyrk mountain on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of Mongolia's accession to the United Nations. The ceremony was attended by the resident coordinator of the United Nations in Mongolia, Tapan Mishra, the deputy minister for foreign affairs, Mohjing, and other officials. Mongolia became the 101st member of the United Nations on October 27, 1961. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the declaration of independence as a fully-fledged member of the United Nations. In connection with this anniversary, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the UN Resident Coordinator's Office are jointly organizing a UN Week from October 20th through 27th. Bainzur Herchen Forest is located about 15 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar, and to commemorate the 60th anniversary, 2,500 trees have been planted to rehabilitate the mountain forest. The Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mokchen, and the United Nations Resident Coordinator in Mongolia, Mr. Tapan Mishra, participated in the tree planting event, thereby contributing to the fight against climate change, desertification, and land degradation problem, not only in Mongolia but also across the world, and also expressed support for the Billion Tree National Movement initiated by the President of Mongolia, Hursu Hochna. Mongolia is celebrating the 16th anniversary of its accession to the United Nations. To mark this 16th anniversary, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the United Nations Resident Coordinator Office are co-organizing a week-long series of events, beginning with the tree planting event on the Bainzurk Mountain. At the UN General Assembly, the President of Mongolia, Hursu Hochna, proposed to plant up to 1 billion trees by 2030. Representatives of the ministries and UN agencies came today to support this initiative. This event is the beginning of UN Week. We don't see planting trees as just planting trees. The most important thing is to pay constant attention to the care and protection of the trees. Also, a series of events are being organized to raise awareness and inform the public about the importance of working together with the United Nations. Is uh, starting with actually making physical effort of making green and clean and beautiful Mongolia a reality. So uh, all our UN colleagues from all the UN agencies are here, along with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, including the Vice Minister and other government counterparts from the Ministry of Environment and Tourism, the uh, Mayor's Office in Mongolia. We are all here together to show that to make this country more resilient towards climate change impact, we need to do actions, not just words. We're starting the UN week with commitment for action. And as I said in my opening speech here, that we will work together for the larger, inclusive and sustainable development of Mongolia for the next five years. The 60 years has been extraordinary in terms of the partnership we've come so far. But we look forward to having a more um, uh, improved lives of all Mongolians with uh, uh, the achievement of the SDGs towards going to the Vision 2050 for Mongolia in the best possible way. 
As part of the UN Week, a number of events have been planned, including the tree planting event at the Bainturk Mountain, a photo exhibition marking the 60th anniversary of the UN membership, the opening of a photo album, a model UN conference and scientific conferences. A model UN conference and scientific conferences. As of today, 11 United Nations agencies are established and operating in Mongolia. That whole province launched a train carriage service dedicated especially to children. The train carriage consists of two wagons and locomotive and is capable of carrying up to 64 little passengers. Even though the train carriage is capable of transporting 64 passengers, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, only 16 children can board the train at the moment. I like how it's decorated. It's really interesting. I like it. It's a first child train. We are traveling with my daughter. We have gathered some investments to create this train carriage for children. The railroad's total length is 2.3 kilometers. The whole complex consists of three train stations, one depot, a signal system, automated crossings, and one crossings for car. As a symbol of the Mongolian-Russian relations, this train station complex was created from a local regional budget of 4 billion Mongolian Tugruks and the grant aid from the Ulaanbaatar Railway Joint Stock Company. This train station complex was also built to commemorate the 16th anniversary of Tarhan Old City. Children can play at this train station complex and it will also show children what the railroad industry is all about. It will help them choose their future profession. The child train has 10 horsepower engine. This train station complex is one of the major infrastructure projects dedicated to children over the last 30 years. The project implementers note that the complex will be expanded in the future and the leisure park will be built. The cabinet of Mongolia held its regular meeting on October 20th and made several decisions. Details of the meeting from the following report. The Minister of Mining and Heavy Industry addressed the establishment of a mineral exchange and ordered relevant ministers to urgently prepare for the presentation of a draft law on the mineral exchange to the Parliament of Mongolia. The Government of Mongolia is working to establish a mineral exchange for the following reasons to oversee the profits and sales of mineral products, to centralize profits gained from mineral resources which are specified by the Constitution of Mongolia as state and public property in the National Wealth Fund to assess the value of mining products in accordance with standards of the international market for the purpose of distributing profits fairly and equally, to increase the profit gained from mining products. Some of the main subjects of the draft law are the ownership status of the exchange, a quality audit for the mineral products to be exchanged in the market and appropriate taxes. The government of Mongolia formed the National Committee on Climate Change and Reduction of Desertification and approved its members. The committee will focus on organizing and overseeing the One Billion Trees National Campaign and will fulfill Mongolia's obligations under the UNFCC's Paris Agreement and UN Convention to Combat Desertification. Moreover, the committee will coordinate working sectors' action on desertification and environmental pollution. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the United Nations Resident Office in Mongolia jointly launched the UN Week from the 20th to 27th of October to promote the history of the UN and the importance of membership to the general public. Within the frame of this UN Week, a photo album was launched and a photo exhibition opened on October 21st at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The director of the Multilateral Cooperation Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Girishma, made her opening remarks for the ceremony. She talked about the enormous contributions made by the United Nations over the past 60 years to maintaining world peace and security, promoting international exchanges and cooperation, and enhancing world development and progress. Moreover, she also pointed out that in human history, no organization has ever had such a major global influence as the United Nations. Very pleased today to be launching the photo album for the 60th anniversary of Mongolia joining the United Nations. This is a photo album which has around 120 photographs in it, representing 60 years of collaboration and history of Mongolia in the United Nations, both at the headquarters level engagement, but also the engagement of 
different UN agencies with Mongolia over the years. Guests and senior diplomats attended the photo exhibition. The invited guests showed great interest in this exhibition. They highly acclaimed the contributions made by Mongolia to the United Nations, hoping to see an even more active and intensive role to be played by Mongolia in the United Nations and world affairs. The significance is that it gives Mongolia that identity of the sovereign independent nation that has the voice to speak to the whole world about the global issues and about issues that it's most concerned about on peace, security, on human rights, on inclusive and sustainable development. So Mongolia has a stage in the whole world where it raises its voice on issues that is of highest concern. So uh, today, on the, this occasion, we have launched a photo album in, in the whole UN country team to showcase some of those images because pictures are very, very precious and talks about a lot of those events happening and how Mongolia has developed into a strong and vibrant nation in the path of inclusive and sustainable development. This historic photo album contains more than 100 photographs and the photo exhibition features more than 30 unique historical events. More than 30 photos shown at the exhibition reflect many invaluable historical records, such as representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs signing on the UN Charter and the Mongolian state and government leaders participating in UN conferences. In addition, it also demonstrates Mongolia's extensive participation and active support of the work of the United Nations in peacekeeping operations, disarmament, economic and social development, and human rights. Now let's take a look at decisions made the regular cabinet meeting of this week. The Minister of Energy was tasked with organizing a tender for the selection of Tavan Tatla thermal power plant construction and to boost project execution without any further delay. Representing project initiator Tavan Tatla Ertnes LLC will fund up to 30% of this project. The remaining amount will be funded by tender based on the result of an international open tender for self-funding EPC plus F option approved by the government of Mongolia. The tender was announced on October 21st and the winner of the tender will be selected within 90 days. After a successful tender, a construction deal will be agreed upon in the first quarter of 2022. A new 450 megawatt thermal power station and 220 kilowatt transmission line will be operational by 2025. The Minister of Energy Tevimbich presented the progress of a construction project for the fifth electric and thermal power plant that is based on upon the infrastructure of the thermal power plant number three. Thermal power plant three is one of the main sources of providing heating in Ulaanbaatar. Even though it is located in the most appropriate area to generate city heating, the main equipment for the station has aged and now is in a hazardous state. Project implementation companies from Mongolia and Russia, Interrao Export Organization and the Mongolian TIS-3 state-owned enterprise have signed a cooperation memorandum and negotiated working terms. Interrao expert company will carry out a feasibility study within 180 days. The government of Mongolia is planning to present an issue for a loan based on the analysis of the feasibility study from the government of the Russian Federation in the first quarter of next year. Well, that's all for this week. We'll see you next week with more news and updates. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye.